The Huntington welcomes you to Dreaming with Designers, featuring set designer Wilson Chen, and moderated by Charles Hoagland, Director of New Work. All events at the Huntington include a land acknowledgement. The Huntington acknowledges that our physical spaces stand on the occupied homeland of the Massachusetts people. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the Massachusetts tribe, from whom the colony, province, and Commonwealth of Massachusetts have taken their name. We'd like to pay respect to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit the land to this day. We honor and respect the many native peoples who are connected to this land, past, present, and future, including the Nipmuc and Wampanoag peoples. And now, Dreaming with Designers. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Wilson. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Um, so we're going to jump right into conversation. Uh, uh -huh. I'd love to hear about what continues to inspire you about working as a scenic designer. Um, I mean, I just love theater. I love going to see theater. I love the people who work in theater. So it's, um, it's just fun. It's nonstop fun. I love working on new plays because it's just like you never know what you know, you're always kind of like looking for something new and exciting and something that you've never seen before. So like, you know, every, every day is different, you know, it's like, it's not like a nine to five job where you know exactly where you're going to be tomorrow or the next week or a month from now. It's just like, I literally have no idea where I'm going to be a week from now or a month from now, but I know that I will be working. Um, can you tell us about your path to becoming a, a scenic designer? How did you how did you find your way to that career? Um, I mean, I guess like you know when I was in high school, I discovered theater. I you know Stephen Sondheim, who you guys have a huge relationship with. You've done like so many of his shows, but he was my gateway into theater. I remember like I went to the local public library, my because um, I had seen like a high school play. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was Jesus Christ Superstar. And I was like, <laughs> this is amazing. And I went to the library and then I just like got some cast out. I got like Into the Woods mm -hmm. and I got Assassins. Mm -hmm. And I remember just like thinking, I'm, and I just fell in love. Mm -hmm. It was so random, but like I, Stephen Sondheim was my like gateway into theater. And you've mostly designed uh, new plays at the Huntington, although you also did Romeo and Juliet. Yes. And um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Um, yeah. But what? What? How is the balance of those things in your career? As someone who started um, with a relationship with musicals, uh, found your way into new play design and uh, and then reinterpretations of classics. Yeah, I don't know how that because I had always imagined myself just like doing musicals all the time. <laughs> Um, how did I fall into doing new plays? I guess, you know, when I went to grad school, I went to a Yale School of Drama and I, you know, there were playwrights mm -hmm. as part of the group and I just became really good friends with all, uh, all of the playwrights. And my class was Rape Mot Mot, who mm -hmm. you produced one of his plays yeah. a few years ago. Um, so like, I think they opened my eyes to like new works and how exciting it is to be at you know, at the first stages of a of of a of a new of a new play, and like, you know, because it's not like when you do an old play, there's a history. You know, it's like people have done it before. There is like the building blocks of what that play actually is. When you do a new play, you don't know what it. You know, like we're, everyone is discovering what is this thing, mm -hmm. what is this piece of writing that only exists on the page, how what does it mean physically? How do you go from scene to scene? And I, you know, like being there from the ground level is really exciting. And new plays, sometimes you have a longer um, personal relationship with them. This play you've been working on a long time in different forms. When was the first time you read Teenage Dick? We started it at um, the Mayi Theater at the Public Theater. It was like a public theater provided the space Mayi produced it. Mm -hmm. And like, do you remember what year that was? It, it was like 2017, 2018. Yeah, yeah. Like I saw that. the the previous public studio version that was like oh. very bare bones. Um, I was not there for that. Yes. Uh, and, but, and then I think it was yeah. 2018, yeah. 
Um, so, you know, we started there. And then, you know, also before that, Moritz, Mike Lou, and I had also done uh, Tiger Style. Right. First at the Alliance and then at the Huntington mm -hmm. and then now this. So I feel like we've been doing, we've been collaborating for a long time now. Um, so yeah, it started at the public, uh, the Mayu Theater and, um, and it looked very similar to what it was at the Huntington. It's just, it's bigger now because it's a bigger space. Mm. It's, we have more depth, but um, we had, you know, like Greg and Shannon were in that production. Um, yeah, wait, so what were you asking about that? Original? Yeah, so um, when they, um, when uh, Mike and Moritz first approached you about coming on to this project, what interested you about it? What um, first caught your attention about it? uh the humor the kind of ties to Shakespeare because I know Richard III pretty well I had done it before so like seeing the way it goes in and out of Richard III is so mm -hmm. clever and you know and his writing is so funny but then at a certain point it's like funny 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 and then like the 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 coin turns and it's like mm -hmm. oh this mm -hmm. is this is pretty dark so I loved that I was like oh this is this is like um this is actually pretty deep and there's a, there's a lot going on in this play. Mm -hmm. So all of that was, you know, what really, really attracted me to the play. But even, even besides all that, once, once they said like Moritz is doing it and Mike Lou wrote it, I was like, I'm in, I don't, I don't care. But it was, it, it was amazing that it's just like an incredible play as well. And then how does your design process start? Like, is it about really diving into the text? Is it about conversation? Is it about research? Where do you sort of enter projects as a designer? Um, for this one, well, for all shows, you just begin by reading it, mm -hmm. you know, like not not writing anything down, just reading it, like, like feeling like you're an audience member and just taking in the story. And then once you do that, then you kind of like start really thinking about what does it mean to physicalize this play? Mm. And for this one, I knew that it had so many scenes. Mm -hmm. So I had to like really break it down. So, you know, you just go back through the script and like literally writing it down or typing it out, an outline of all the different locations. And then like for this play, once I did that, I realized, oh, there's actually a progression in the mm -hmm. way the play works. And and the progression is like, you know, it starts out as like this kind of John Hughesy high school comedy, but then there is a kind of like a falling apart. There's like a messiness that becomes more kind of um, almost like existential or like uh, uh, um, the, the vocabulary of the play changes. Mm. So, and I discovered that by looking at the outline because mm. the outline told me it was like, oh, we're going, it, it just, it, it, the, um, it, it showed me that location becomes a little bit more amorphous in the end mm. and it's just, it becomes more messy. So, so that informed a lot to me mm. and I realized, oh, this play needs to go on, this, this set, this physical world goes on a journey of its own. Um, uh, that's great. So, um, uh, so do you start sketching? Do you go straight to sort of a model or drafting? What is the next step there? Um, I always kind of start with like a little sketch, just kind of, just to kind of, cause I usually have an image in my head and I have to just like spit it out. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to spit it out is just to do a little quick sketch. And then from there, I kind of, I can see it and then I kind of start making a model. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I always make a model and um, and then over a series and then and, and then that's what I'll show a director as a model. Um, in this in this play color was kind of important because mm -hmm. like I need I knew that it was going to be these like bold school colors but also like a play on you know, like this is being a microcosm of America. So I knew that like red, white and blue was also. <laughs> Um, a theme. So like, I kind of, I think I went directly into color for the show because it was so important. Do you want to show us the model now and talk oh, about yeah, sure. um, Absolutely. Uh, those early conversations? Um, so here's, now this is like the finished model. Can you see okay. that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just like paper and foam core. 
Mm -hmm. um, and just like, and, and you can see like color already is a, an important element of like putting it together because the color is it's like a, it's a poppy set. I knew that the set needed to like pop and be like funny and comic in a way. Um, and I knew that I wanted to like mix um, contemporary like kind of high school comedy mm -hmm. with Shakespearean elements so like we do these did these little castle turrets on top to kind of I like this so much which is like a play on cinder block as well because I knew like cinder block is such like the building blocks of like school architecture sometimes but mm -hmm. if you just like take one cinder block out then it's like oh it's kind of castle like um and I also you know like the I also wanted like um, sports elements because I feel like so much of the play is about how um, Richard feels isolated from the kind of like the the sports, mm -hmm. uh, the focus on sports in schools. So we had these like little kind of like Olympic figures and, you know, like these little very able-bodied, you know, like kind of alpha, um, you know, like physical people who are, who in counterpoint to like what he's kind of like fighting against mm -hmm. and then like of course the huge wall of trophies for sports yeah. just so that it you know it's like so so that we see it's what he's kind of like fighting against is like physicalized on on stage and i feel like it um is also in conversation with that character of eddie as the jock yeah. junior class president of like even when Eddie's not on stage, we see the world that is like built for Eddie to be the obvious leader, the like exactly. cis white yeah. male leader. Yeah, I mean, like you know, if this is Richard the Third, this is like the crown. You know, mm -hmm. this is like the throne. So it's that that's that's like the Richard the Third connection. Oh, that's great. Um, and will you talk about those little windows that sort of function in the design, like the their yeah. I mean, I just knew that like as a school, uh, you know, there wouldn't be huge windows, but I, I needed light to come in yeah. and I wanted um, like a strong backlight just because it's like that kind of like powerful uh, lighting position for like, you know, like power and, you know, that kind of strong kind of like Les Mis backlight. Um, uh, like when you see, okay, so this is when the classroom goes away. And, and then, you know, it just works for all the different scenes yeah. to have the, that layering of windows in there. Like when we go into the dance studio, that seems, that's like a common thing that you would find in a dance studio as well. And then when you go into like, you know, the prom, well, the, the Sadie Hawkins dance, it's, you know, it's just like a fun way to like create dance lighting as well. It also, I feel like, makes the set so emotionally mutable of like the tone can shift just in the way the color changes in those windows, I feel like sometimes, exactly. in a way that I think is so cool watching the show. Yeah. We used to have balloons on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no more balloons. Um, we we switched them to balloons on the walls. Um, and will you talk a little bit about, you said, you know, this is uh, often, uh, you're having a conversation with the director when you present um, your idea of the show. Like, what is that conversation like? What kinds of questions are you asking one another? Um, I'm going to stop, share. That's great. Uh, what conversations we have, uh, you know, like tone, mm -hmm. um, tone of the piece and like, what we think the play is about, you yeah. know, like, I mean, on this show, I feel like Moritz and I are very much on the same page with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So those meetings are just almost like confirmation of what we both think the play is about because it's like, and also I feel like Moritz is a very like, yes and director. Mm -hmm. Like he will tell me what he thinks the play is about and then I'll add on to that and he'll be like, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, like I feel like theater can sometimes be a, all about an abundance of ideas mm -hmm. and there's no, you know, you can layer on a play like this can take a lot of ideas and layering on top of it and it can withstand it and um and it just makes for like a big sometimes messy but like overabundant play mm -hmm. which i think this this play is um what changed most about this design during the process was there something that was like um 
particularly interesting to figure out um, you know, one of the things I think that's so striking about it is that moment that we go into Anne's bedroom and it's like a total transformation. Yeah, the, I, I, I was thinking about that scene. That scene we, is our like window into Anne's um, inner life and yeah. it's her bedroom, you know? So each time we've done that, we've kind of made it more particular to the actor that we had. So like we, we did work with the actress who plays Anne to like kind of make it more like her world mm -hmm. to like her idea of what the character is. So like we've always kind of like, so, so the, the kind of details of that mm -hmm. space is different than when it was, than when it was at the Mayi theater. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else did we change? You know, we also like discovered things because we have um, a wheelchair in the show. Mm -hmm. You know, the way uh, the access in and out of the space, you know, we learned things like you need a little bit more space there, you need a little bit more space up there. So uh, from Woolly Mammoth to uh, Huntington, we did change the ground plan to make it deeper some of the some of the entrances deeper um so that's that's a change that we made um what else did we change i don't know we we um the huntington made us a new deck mm. because we changed the um ground plan enough that they were like you know what instead of scabbing it all together from the old deck we're just going to make you a nice brand new deck which is so it was, it's it was very exciting to like come in and see this beautiful new deck cool um uh so sort of my last question is um uh, some of the audience for this talk are students who are maybe thinking about a career in the arts and um, what advice do you have if they're thinking that scenery or design might be a place that they're interested in? Um, I mean, I always tell people that you should um, see theater, you know, like become a fan of it, see, see what, see the range of what's out there. Um, but if, if, and if you want to do it, um, you know, if you're in school, get involved in your school theater program if you have one. Um, uh, that's how I started. I, you know, just working with my friends and putting on shows mm -hmm. and doing school shows. And, um, and if you want to study it, like later on, you know, I also um, am a big believer in um, working as an assistant. That's what I did uh, out of, I assisted my like college teacher. Mm -hmm. She was a working professional, Kate Edmonds. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I assisted her for a while and I assisted lawyer Senes, who was also in the Bay area, um, because, you know, it's, it's an actual job. Yeah. Um, so it's like, and you learn so much from doing it. You learn, you learn as much working in theater as you do studying it. Cause mm -hmm. you know, like studying it is it, it's, it's, it's all about the practice of, uh, putting on a show and there's so much you learn just by doing it. Um, so it's a, it's a good job. And um, so uh, that, I mean, and just, you know, like getting together with friends and finding other people who love theater and also want to put on shows and just put on shows with them. Yeah, I think that's so powerful about theater um... Um, like theater has uh, many ways to enter it, but there is a huge apprenticeship component to creating a life in the theater where like you're working closely with someone over a long period of time and that's part of how you yeah. develop your skills. I mean, it's, it's also very particular to design, set design, because it takes a team of people to put on a show. It's not just like one designer does it all. It mm -hmm. takes so many people. So it's like, there is a job for, a lot. you know, like, if you are, if you want to jump in, there's a job for you in it. And it's always good to, you know, like we, we don't believe in free labor or volunteers or even like, you know, unpaid internships. No, no, no. So like luckily in the world of set design, there actually are jobs for people if you have the skills, you know, if you can make models, if you can draft, if you can do like computer renderings, it's like there's, there's so much. And that's just in set design. Yeah. In the construct, you know, there's also construction. There's also painting. There's also props. So it's just it takes it's a lot of people to put on a show. 
Well, thank you so much for finding time to chat with us. I think the show is so wonderfully successful and it's been great to have a chance to hear more about your experience on it today. Thank you. Have a great one. Thank you.